tax evasion and tax fraud. Are you aware about this matter, sir? I'm not aware. I'm not aware at all. What the, reason, the reason I called you because we are already under the impression that you are already aware about this matter. And at this point of time, I responsibly believe that you are ready to challenge the government in the program. That's the reason we try to reach you to obtain your personal information. But at this moment, that you are not aware about this case. Is that right? Well, I don't have an attorney, and I don't really know what this is about. So you're, you're from the IRS? So you're, you're you're from the IRS and uh, you you want to know if I have Let's say that again. I'm calling you from the legal investigation department of the Internal Revenue Service. Okay, you, the legal speaking to office is Jordan Morris. Yes. Jordan Morris? Okay. That's correct. Okay. And what what do I need? Well, as you just inform me. As you just inform me that you are not aware about this case. No, right? I, I'm not at all. Okay. All right. Now, before we start from your case, people, I want you to make a note of my information. So, grab a fresh piece of paper and send with you. And once you have it, let me know. Okay. All right. First of all, make a note of my name. You're speaking to Jordan Morris. Let me tell the name for you. At J as in Jack. Jackson. O as in Oscar. R as in Lucy. D as in Delta. A as in Alpha. N as in Nancy. The first name is Jordan, the last name is Morris, it's M as in Mary, O as in Oscar, R as in Richard, R as in Romeo, I as in Indiana, S as in Sam, Morris, okay, with the badge number, number three, number nine, zero, number six, number one, number eight, it's three nine zero six one eight. Three nine zero six one eight, okay. With the employee code 6930 with the legal investigation department of the internal revenue service well make a note of your case id number it's letter c as in charlie okay letter b as in letter b as in delta number eight number six number four Number five, number two. Could you repeat the case file number to make sure you have the correct numbers? Is there a place I can go online to look this up? Could you repeat the case file number to make sure you have the correct number, sir? Or should I repeat the case file number one more time for you? Um, well, I'm just wondering if I can look it up online somewhere. Thank you, Patrick. Can I look it up online somewhere? Okay, give it to me one more time. Hold on, hold on. My, uh, my pen wasn't working. Okay. Um. Okay. 
Okay, go for it. All right. Letter B, as in Charlie. C, Charlie. Letter B, as in Delta. Delta. Number eight. Eight. Number six. Six. Number four. Four. Number five. Five. Could you repeat the page one number to make sure you have the correct number? C D eight six four five two. Uh-huh. That's correct. All right. So that's great. As I'm providing you your case information in detail, so it is highly appreciated if you do not interrupt me in between or listen to me very carefully. So I can make you understand what this piece is about for you better not. Mr. Great, I promise. I'm going to give you very much a chance to speak and raise your question once I'm done giving the case to you. Is it very clear to you, sir? Okay. There is a statutory audit performance by the IRS for which the auditor is to look after the sign of tax law. And any kind of tax law is only for the product you can get from the regular thing. And now we have. We have conducted a tax audit to verify your income and get the tax rate through the course of investigation for your taxes. IRS has found there was. In your tax figure, there was a major manipulation. Unusual figure is leading towards the system, and the IRS had strong evidence to profit and innocent negligence, but it was done on purpose to defraud with the IRS and to rack taxes to save some money. So, when we found this mistake over your taxes, we have sent an officer from the tax audit department at your mailing address, which is 1208 Denver Post Avenue, Sanson. For the zip code 02021, we have sent a tax officer at your mailing address to do an audit over your tax basis so that the officer can search with you, go through all your tax papers, and make you see where did you end up making mistakes over your tax basis so that you can rectify your mistake with the officer and take care of the situation. So, if IRS found you a suspect towards any kind of crime, on your tax filing, that as for the law, IRS is only authorized to get in touch with you twice. Okay, and we have already done that. The first attempt was made by the officer. It was on February 22nd, 2016, on Monday, when the tax officer had visited at your mailing address to do an audit on your tax filing so that the officer could make you see the discrepancy and the miscalculation happened for the year of 2007 and 2013. So you could be in position to rectify your mistakes with the officer and take care of the legal matter. But unfortunately, the officer had reported in your case investigation people that when he present at your house, there was no one available at your home to receive the legal certified document from the federal agent. Now, Mr. Gray, you know the fact, in order to receive any kind of legal certified document from the federal officer, you need to do an authorized signature to get the document. And without your signature, the officers cannot hand over the legal certified documents to anyone apart from you. So as there was no one available at your place of residence, the document was returned back to the headquarters. So we had made our final attempt, which was most crucial for the IRS. So the IRS headquarters had forwarded the legal documents to the local investigation department of the IRS, and we have asked the revenue officer to go to your house, meet you in person, and hand over the legal documentation to you. So the IRS can have enough evidence that we have made a task to serve you the legal documentation. Now, Mr. Gray, I would like to understand from your end, were you available at your home on March 10th, 2016 at 1 p.m. on Thursday? Is, is that when the officer came? Yeah, the reason I asked you for the specific date and time, because as I see here in the academic papers, it says that 
on the office group with the bench of the top residents to serve you the legal documents on March 10, 2016 at 1 p.m. on Thursday, there was no one available at your home to receive the legal documents. Oh, what did he... Did he, did he leave it on my front door or anything? Yes, the officer had left a yellow slip notice requesting you to contact the other office at your doorstep. Oh, he, did he he left it on he my left door? He slip at your doorstep. Yes, he left the, the... Sir, he left the slip at your doorstep and he clicked a picture of it. So now we have enough evidence to prove that inside the court house. The slip has the IRS contact number your case number and the yellow slip clearly stated that you need to contact the IRS office within 30 days of the and if you fail to do so, IRS will proceed and take legal action against you. But since we have not received any response, there was no correspondence made from your end, which makes now the IRS believe maybe you are trying to avoid the letter which was sent to you by the IRS or maybe you believe the taxes that you filed for all those seven years are correct and now you are in position to challenge the IRS in the court house. That's the reason IRS has filed a criminal case against you for tax evasion and tax fraud. Can I know the reason why you have not responded after receiving the notice? I don't I don't remember receiving a notice. So we have the evidence to prove it, we have notified you about this matter. We cannot take your words as an evidence over the recorded line. Okay. And let me inform you, sir, IRS never accused any person without having strong evidence and proof. And as we are under impression, as you are not responding to the government, that you are doing this kind of fraud with an intention to defraud with the IRS and evade taxes to save some money. So under this statement, which has been proclaimed by the High Commission, they are pressing four serious allegations under your name. This four allegations will be under Chapter 13 and under Section 37 C. Allegation number one, violation of federal tax regulation. Allegation number two, violation of internal revenue code. Allegation number three, theft by deception. Allegation number four, willful misrepresentation of information against the government organization. Now, yeah. at this point of time, IRS has decided to forcefully recollect this amount from you by involving the internal revenue code 6331H against you. This means IRS will mark a lead on your assets, including your house, your car, or your known bank account, will be frozen and confiscated under investigation. Now, within the next 60 minutes, there will be a red flag notice signed under Chapter 11 in with two federal charges, tax evasion as per U.S. Reform Act 1986 and tax lien as per Reform Act 1966 under your name, reporting about the federal lawsuit to your bank and to our banking with. So you won't be able to make any transactions through your debit card, your credit card, your checking account, or your saving account, as it will be frozen under investigation for the next one year. That's... The IRS will also file a notice of federal tax lien informing the public and your creditor about the government's legal claim on your property. We will also file a lien on your official assets, your 401k, retirement, pension, social security benefits, wages, investments, bonds, stock, shares will be frozen and informing your employer and government body that you are affiliated with. And wow. if you have an existing payment plan with the IRS will be terminated and the section 30 AFIR code, I will give you a chance sir, to speak, let me complain. Okay, if you have any existing payment plan with the IRS will be terminated in section 30 AFIR code and your passport will be released along with your state ID. So under no circumstances, you lose this country after committing this fraud against the government. So now, within the next 30 minutes, you will be arrested by the local county sheriff officer. They will serve you all the legal case files, court subpoena, and the non-available arrest warrant and take you into the, into the custody for further investigation. So before we have you arrest and take you into the custody, do you have any questions regarding your case? So, so you're saying that I did all these bad this this crime? I've defrauded the IRS. I haven't, I haven't uh, responded. And in the next, thir and all that other stuff you said, and then within the next thirty minutes, I'm going to be arrested. That's horrible. What? Yes, sir. They're going to come to my house. So it might be possible. Oh man, that's horrible. I don't want to get arrested. What do I have to do? 
at this point of time, I'm not sure whether any response, you know, whether any uh, option is left for you. But I can try one thing. I can transfer your call to one of the senior investigation officers who will assist you further. Okay. So I'm putting you on hold for a while. Please stay connected. Oh man. Okay, definitely. Is there a number I can call back just in case we get disconnected? I'm. I don't want to. Don't worry. Don't worry, sir. Let me connect your call to the officer. Please take an action. I'm really concerned. Thanks a lot for your time and patience, Hello. Yes. I was just told that I'm going to be arrested. Yeah, Mr. Gray, the officer in chief of the criminal investigation department. First, I want you to make a note of my name. My um, first name is Christopher. Christopher? Okay. Last name Paul, that is spelled C A U L. My last, okay? C A U L, like a regular Paul. Okay. My badge number, my name is Turner Revenue, is 55. Nine one, and my employee code number is nine seven six nine. Nine seven six nine. So, Christopher, is there a number I can call you back just in case we get disconnected? It's one eight hundred eight two nine one zero four zero. It's the IRS number. It's oh. already available on the government website as well as on Google. The okay. Revenue one eight hundred eight two nine one. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Now, first thing is to agree. As you're telling me with the recorded line, as you are about to proceed with the legal action of your case, we were under the impression that you're already aware about the situation. So our job was only to ascertain that your criminal attorney's information was to direct the your case in the courthouse. No, I wasn't. I the recorded line to scream and order to mistake. You have done not done these things for a reason. Was your intention by any means to want to leave from the IRS? Is this just truly being an honest mistake? Yeah, no, it, I, it was not my intention. I don't remember receiving any sort of uh, notice from anybody. See, at this point of time, your case is on the verge of execution. If the matter gets executed, what are the consequences? You have been already notified about that. Yeah, it sounds but like. I'm telling you on the recent line that this is not your. You have not done this thing for a reason. It has been a mistake. So at this point of time, there's nothing that can be done. But if you want, I can try and see what can be done as if I try to avail an action for you. Because there's nothing that can be done if I'm trying to avail the action for you. Are you telling me you would do whatever it takes in order for you to fix the situation? Definitely. I mean, uh, it, it sounds like I'm going to be arrested in the next, by the end of the day if I don't do something. So what can I do so that I don't get arrested? Okay, first thing is that there is only option one at this point of time, which is going to be if I'm trying to avail an option, that means I'm trying to put myself into your seat. I'm putting my, I'm putting myself into your shoe, okay? Oh, I appreciate that. And at the same time, you need to understand, I don't want to jeopardize my name and my reputation in front of the Act Commission. Thank you, have passed records. I've ran a background check and a record have seen that you have never been into any legal trouble. And looking to that record, I will try and see what can be done. So at this point of time, there's only option number one is that if I give you a chance to resolve the matter, you will have to deposit the money in the account provided by the state authorities. Now, I'm not sure what kind of information I will be getting from their end. I'm not aware what is the name of the attorney that I'm going to be receiving, that you need to sub deposit the money into the account because we need to submit this money at the courthouse in order for us to cancel the warrant of your arrest. So if you don't have any problem doing that, then I can look forward with the court committee members. Is there any way to stop all the legal actions? Yeah, I'll do whatever I have to do. You said deposit money into uh, um, an the account? account of the attorney, I'm going to, that's correct, of the attorney. Is it a local okay. attorney? 
I'm going to provide you that information. That attorney will be from the Internal Revenue. Okay. The criminal lawyers who's handling your case, okay? So I'm not sure who is your attorney who is going to be taking care of this matter on our your behalf. So I'll check with the court committee members who will get an attorney available. So according to that, I will give that information to you. So first thing, as you're trying to resolve the matter out of court, that means to try to settle the situation out of court. And for this, I will have to seek for an approval from the bar council members and from the state authorities. There is only one option on your case, which is known as OIC, which stands for Offer and Compromise, which means we're offering you a last chance to compromise this issue with the IRS. And this option is decided by the state authorities and the, by the Attorney General's office. Okay. Because minute by minute action, the recording is getting forwarded to the full committee members. So if under any circumstances they believe that the cooperation is compromised or unfulfilled, and the option for you to resolve the case with the IRS will be terminated and goes forever. Okay. But before I give you any chance to resolve the matter, let me ask you a question. I want you to be very honest with me. Now, Mr. Gray, have you ever been arrested for any criminal activities before this? No, never. Have you been into prison? No. Have you been a victim of identity theft? Have No. In the last 10 years, have you received a speeding ticket or any uh, parking ticket? Not that I can remember. Apart from this case, do you have any pending judgment or any pending cases which are under your record? No. Nothing. On the basis of your... Okay, so on the basis of your recorded statement, we understand that you're not an habitual offender of committing this kind of crime in the past. And only on the basis of your last record. I'm sorry. Informing the bar court committee members to authorize the OOCR document and give me the final chance to resolve the matter out of court. So I want you to first make a note of the documents, which is known as O like an Oscar. O. O is an Oscar. C like Charlie and R like Roger. It stands for out, O U T, out, of, O F, of, court, that is C O U R T, court to restitution. Okay. Which means you're willingly working with the internal revenue to take care of the legal matter. And you're not trying to run away from this case, is that correct? That's right. No, definitely not. Now, Mr. Gray, there will be certain protocols which we, you need to follow from your and I rest assure you, you will be able to fix the situation within two hours and take care of the legal matter as for the law. If you agree with the protocols provided to you by the court committee members, then only they will authorize your OCR copy or else they will cancel it and proceed to the legal action. Okay. So if you agree with the protocol given by them, then I can look forward to work with you step by step and help you to fix this issue, okay? Okay. Now, the, now first thing is that the Attorney General's office is the one who will decide on the payment terms, which is going to be a cash deposit. Okay. Now, they are going to activate the bank account only for a prior time of 30 minutes. So they have a prior time of 30 minutes in order for you to pull the money out of your account. Now, you should be required to deposit the cash in the desired account as offered by the Attorney General's office. And if the account will be in the name of the State Collection Agency or on the name of the Attorney of the IRS, I'm not sure what is that information going to be. But this will help us to ensure that your bank and our bank both are getting involved in the source of transaction. Okay. As we're trying to convert your bank taxes into good ones, we need to show the received amount towards the outstanding on the bank date that you have underpaid your taxes. So first, you will have to go to your bank. You need to pull the money out of your bank account in cash for the amount of, I just want you to make a note of the amount. It's $5,349.80. $5,329.80? It's $49, not $39, 5349.80. 5349.8. Okay. That's correct. You need to pull this money out of your account and you need to deposit the money into the account provided by the Attorney General's office. Okay. Once you do the deposit, the bank will give you a receipt copy for it. You have to put a copy that receipt onto the email ID of the IRS, which is irs.us.com to the attorney handling your case and mlogan at legislator.com. Okay. Because I will have to put a copy of the receipt along with your photo <coughs> ID of the driver's license and forward it to the court committee members for the authorization of your case. Okay. And in order for you to 
or to write your payment from the bank. Once you get the receipt, the receipt you will be keeping that with you very safely. You will have to bring the receipt at the local office of the IRS and submit that receipt on there so we can accept your payment. Okay? Okay. Okay, that is the terms and condition number one. Now, protocol number two is that as we are over the recorded lines, the recording is going to be taken as an evidence until the time you reach the IRS office and take care of the matter as for the law. You will have to stay connected with us on your cell phone because this recording is going to be the only evidence which is going to work into your favor. There is no other evidence to prove you innocent in the court. Okay. So in the first house, there are 12 jury members. The judicial member are the people who can listen to your entire conversation and how you cooperated us and how you took care of the matter out of court. And listening to the recording, they are going to authorize their out of court restitution document and give you a clearance letter in regards to your tax fraud case. Okay. So by no means you are going to put me on hold. You cannot put me on mute. You cannot hang up the call. If you do so, the arrangements made to you from okay. the court committee members will be terminated. So, okay? So I can't. Okay, yeah. so so we can't disconnect then. That's correct. So now the number I'm calling you at, 207-751-2927. Is this your home phone or this is your cell phone number? Um, it's it's my uh, home phone number. Will you please help me out with your cell phone number? I really appreciate it. I don't have a cell phone. I'm not rich enough. Okay, you don't use cell phone. I'm checking into your records. I see that you have an ultimate number. Yeah, no, this is, uh, it would be an old number. I used to, but I, I got rid of it. You're breaking up on me. What did you say? Okay, well, I, I'm not understanding you right now. Hey, you good? Is it better? Yeah, that's better. I'm asking you this as it's trying to resolve yeah I want to take care of this as fast as we can for sure um so okay. so you want me to you want me to go to a bank right now while I'm on the phone and withdraw uh five thousand three hundred forty nine dollars and eighty cents while we're on the phone okay yeah, I, can, I believe you don't have reception over your phone, right? When you go out of your house, you cannot take your phone with you as this is a landline, correct? That's right. Okay, so what you need to do is that you need to keep your phone lines open. Make sure the line does not get disconnected. You need to go to your bank and you need to pull the money out of your account and get back to your house and you need to let me you know the guests that you call them back home. So I'm going to give you the further instruction of the account where you need to deposit the money into. Okay, what's that? So how much time is it great to take you to go to your bank and come back home? Um, well, I live right down the street, so it will take me maybe five, I mean, um, maybe, I, maybe. It's probably going to take you like going inside the bank and getting the money out. Now yeah. it will take you 15 minutes, right? Yeah, 15, 15, 20 minutes? 15 to 20 minutes, yeah. Okay, now the important factor over here is that we are activating your account only on the basis of the your recorded statement. Okay. You want to cooperate and take care of the situation. Now, when you will go inside the bank to pull this money out, there is a possible way, there is a possibility. The teller might ask you, what is the purpose of you withdrawing this money for? So what would you say? I would say that I need to I need to get some money to the IRS before they arrest me. Enough. Okay, as I should inform you in advance, Mr. Gray, every account information, if we update this, arrest that under your bank account, it will stay on your credit. So in future, if you apply for any credit bank to get any personal loan, house loan, car loan, or mortgage loan, you will not be entitled to receive that. Oh. If you want us to take your bank account, what? we can do that. But do you want this information coming up against your credit? 
You're trying to resolve the matter out of court. You're not trying to challenge it. No, definitely so I don't. Do everything that will affect your credit, okay? So we are trying to secure your credit over here so we can raise your credit score, okay? Okay. If they ask you why do you need the money for keep it very simple, that is just for your personal use. Otherwise, they will, as they are been informed that you are about to freeze your accounts. If you say that this is the IRS payment, what I'm going to do, they'll directly terminate your bank accounts because they have been notified you're not authorized to pull money out of the account. Oh, but they're activating your bank account. Man, I have... Okay, so... So, so maybe, yes, maybe I should yes, take yes. all my money out then. Sorry? Maybe I should take all my money out then. I don't want... I don't want my... Because if they freeze my account... If, if you guys freeze my account, then I'll lose access to all my money, right? That's correct. So don't do anything wrong which will affect your bank account. Oh, okay? man. There's if like... There's question. there's like over $300,000 in that account. I might need to... Uh, I might need to... I, I'm worried now. So, so what I do is I just go. I get that... Uh, fifty-three hundred and forty-nine dollars and eighty cents. I just take that out and I just tell them it's for my personal use. I'm buying a car or something. That's, co that's correct. So okay. What I can do is now, you can put the phone lines open. Okay, I want you to go to your bank, get back home in twenty minutes. Make sure the lines are not getting disconnected, and once you're back home, just let me know. Okay. Okay. So, so and, you, and you're just gonna hang out on the line while I go do that. That's correct, as we are over the federally recorded lines, okay? Okay. All right, what if I have my wife do it? And then I can stay on the phone with you. That's perfect, okay? So, so, so just uh, 53, 49, 80 cents. You don't need any more than that, right? Just that amount? That's correct, that's correct. You can refer. There, there's not going to be any fees or anything that I'm going to have to worry about, like bank no. fees or. You're going to have to pay money. There will be for transaction fees or bank. Okay. Okay. All right. There's going to be thousand three hundred and fifty dollars at Rocky Speaker. Okay. Okay. All right. And then after I get after I get that money, um, why don't I just take it over to uh, to to your bank and get it deposited right away? Okay, for that, I need to get the approval first, right? I need okay. to get the accounts available, okay? So I need to check with the court committee members, okay? Who is the officer in charge? So according to that, I can get the account for you. Okay, well, why don't you go ahead and do that? I'll, uh, I'll, uh, and that, that, that way I can, I can take care of it all at the same time. So I don't need to go run back and forth to my house. I can just go to my bank, and then after, I can deposit it in, in where it needs to be deposited. Okay, no problem. Now, first thing I need to understand, do you have access to internet over your home or maybe do you have a fax or do you have a, you have a computer at home or maybe a fax machine? Yeah, I do. I have a computer. I have access to the internet, but I can't send cash okay. over the internet. How, how am I going to send cash over the internet? No, 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 that is not for that reason. I'm going to help you with the email ID of the IRS where you need to send the receipt copy, okay? Oh, I send the copy of the receipt from the deposit, from the withdrawal? That's for Okay. That's correct. So I'll help you with that once you get the receipt from the bank, okay? Okay. Which bank is near to you? Wells Fargo or Bank of America? What kind of banks do you have around you? Oh, I have both. I have Wells Fargo. I have Bank of America. I have a, uh, I have um, um, Citizens. I have TD Bank. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two to three minutes of time. Let me get the account for you. Okay. Okay. Just make sure to say hello in every one minute of time. In the meanwhile, I will get the account details. Okay. Just give me. Okay. In the meanwhile, do you want to get ready or you need to get dressed and get ready? No, I'm I'm ready to go. I just, uh, I'd rather not walk back and forth to my house. If I can just go get the money and then bring it right to Wells Fargo, that would be ideal. And then I don't need to worry about getting arrested. Yeah. That's correct. 
Just make sure to help in every one minute of time. In the meanwhile, I'm getting the information for you, okay? Okay, I appreciate it. I have to go to a birthday party tonight, so that would, that would stink if I got arrested. You don't have to worry about that, okay? I'm going to take the seat Just say hello in every one minute of time, okay? As we're on the recorded lines, we're gonna put the recorded lines right. Hello? Yeah, no, so I'm on a recorded line and we have to keep it open. You were getting the bank account information? That's correct. I'm getting it. It's gonna take five minutes, okay? Okay. It sounds like there's a lot of noise in the background. That's correct. There's thousands of people calling the Irish in a day. Do you know which bank it's going to be at? I, as for my knowledge, maybe a Bank of America. Okay. Okay. Let me verify your current zip code number. Is that going to be the same? 02021? You said 02021? What's that for? Is that your current zip code number? What, my phone number? Your zip code number, your current zip code. Um, it's uh, zero. Can you help me out with your... Yeah, no, it's zero two two zero five. Zero two two zero five. It's a uh, zero. No, zero two two zero five. Okay. The Bank of America is approximately not even a mile away from your office. Yeah. Yeah. It's really close. Okay. I just need the account number and then I'll be, and then I can go to my account, get the money out, bring it to Bank of America and de deposit it. Okay, that's not a problem. I'm just waiting for that information. They have updated me for just five minutes. Okay. The information is on the way from the account department, okay? Okay.
You know, there's an IRS office just a few blocks away from where I live. Maybe I could just bring it straight to your That's office. Like but the thing is that the case is with the headquarters. It's not with the local office of the IRS. You need to clear your papers from the Google Gallery and then fax the documents to the local IRS office. Okay, so... Or for me to do that, it's going to take time, okay? So we need to set the appointment for you first. Okay. You have to show up in the IRS office. You can have to cases like that, okay? All right, so I shouldn't... I should not bring the money to the IRS office then. Just bring it to the Bank of America. That's correct. Okay. That's correct, because you, you need to submit this money in courthouse in order for us to get a clearance of your case. Okay. What are... Sorry? All right, I just need the account number, then I'll then I'll take care of all this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what time do you want us to set the appointment for you at the IRS office once you're taking care of this matter? Yeah, like around 11.15 maybe, 11.10, because uh, it's uh, 10.43 now. It's 10.43 now. Um, it'll take me maybe 15, 20 minutes to get to my bank. That will be about 11. And then another five or six minutes to get over to the, the bank. So it'll be around like 11.10 maybe, 11.15. Okay, this, okay. The appointment cannot be done so soon because the thing is over here. We need to get approval from all the civil jury members in the courthouse. Get the sanction letter from the judge. So once that is done, the documents will be faxed to the state authorities with approval to run a background scan. Because we need to show the receipt amount as a good tax. So this procedure of the law, as you understand, there are a thousand different cases going on in the courthouse. No, I, I do. I just want to take care of this as soon as possible. It's going to take at least two hours for us to clear with the documentation. Okay, so I can set you the appointment approximately somewhere maybe around like 1 or maybe 1 30. Okay, 1 to 1 30. All right. Yes, All right, so do we have to stay on the phone and from now until 1 30? Not till, yeah, that's correct. Not till 1.30. Once I set the appointment for you, I'm going to send you the letter, uh, the letter is going to come verification documentation to your email ID. I'll just send it to your back as well if you want. So once you get the documentation, you can get take the papers and go to the IRS office with your phone number, okay? I can go to the bank then? First, you will be going to your bank. You can pull, pull the money out of your account. Yep. Then you will go to the Bank of America or maybe Wells Fargo, okay, where you have to deposit the money. Once you get the receipt, you will be coming back home. You need to send the receipt along with your photo ID. Because I have to attach a photograph on your file and forward it to the court okay. for the authorization of your case for the approval. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I can do all that. I just need the uh, account number to deposit the money into Bank of America. Or Wells Fargo, whichever one you want me to deposit it in. I need that account number so I can deposit it into that account for you guys. Okay, just bear with me, okay? It's going to take two minutes at the maximum to get it updated, okay? Okay. The systems are running a bit slow. Make sure to say hello to everybody face okay? What was that again? Say what? 
Yeah, just say hello. You don't have to talk to me. Just say hello in every minute. In the meanwhile, I'm getting the account details. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. I definitely don't want to get disconnected because I don't want to get arrested. I understand that. Yeah, zip code is um, 02205. Yeah, that's my zip code, 02205. Yeah, I don't see any Wells Fargo Bank around you. Um, Which bank? Okay. Well, I don't bank through them, but I, I know there's a Bank of America. It's just a little bit of ways. I don't bank through Wells Fargo, but I, they must, I'm in downtown Boston. They must be in Boston somewhere. I just assume they would be. I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure I saw them. They're over at Post Office Square. But if you can't do Wells Fargo, I, Bank of America is actually more convenient for me. Okay, are you trying to play games around or you really want to take care of this country? Oh, I definitely want to take care of this. That's why I said Bank of America would be very convenient for me. I just need to uh, get the account number and then I can go get the money from my account and bring it over there and we can have this taken care of. I already got the account for Wells, but the thing is that you have Wells Fargo Bank around you. I'm pretty sure I do. I'm pretty sure I can look it up. Can you look it up and let's see one? Sure, hold it. Hold on a second. I'll uh. Does it have to be Wells Fargo? Yeah, I already got the account for Wells Fargo, so do you have the Wells Fargo around you? Just take a look on that, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I do. Are you there? And can you help me out with the address where it's that located? Okay. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. It looks like it looks like it's located. There's looks like there's a um, Wells Fargo Advisors. And it's in Boston, right near, although it, my internet's a little slow. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, uh, it's at Two International Place. So it's Two International Place, Boston, Mass, 02110. That's why the zip code's just a little different. It's 02110. But it's two international place. Yep. 
Zero two one one zero. Yep, zero two one one zero. And what is the perfect address for that? It's ninety miles away from you. I trying to like uh, no, no, no. take me for a ride. No, it's a two international place, Boston, Mass. O two one one zero. That's that's not nineteen miles away. That's within. A, international. Yeah. Two international. Two international place. Boston, Mass. O two one one zero. But like I said, Bank of America would be easier, but... Okay, take... Sorry? So we're going to do Wells Fargo. Okay, Wells Fargo. Just take down the information, okay? Yeah, what's the account? Account number is 22... It's 2268... Eight, okay. The count. Want you to verify back to me? Sure. Two two six eight six three seven zero eight five. Is that right? That's correct. The amount is going to be three thousand. I'm sorry, five thousand three hundred and thirty-five dollars and fifty dollars. Just make a round figure. Five thousand three hundred and fifty. Okay. Three thousand. I mean, five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, round figure. Okay. That's, that's correct. I want you to make a note of the first name is Jose. That's his spell is J, like Jack. O is in Oscar. S is in sugar. E is in Excel. Okay. Sugar. Okay. Jose. 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 Another L is in Louisiana. A is in Apple. R is in Roger. Another R is in Roger. E is in Echo. A is in Apple. And L is in Lima. I want you to verify it back to me. Um, Jose, J O S E, and then Villarreal. V I L L A R R E A L. R R T. E like an echo after the two R's. Yeah, R -A -L. R R E A L. That's correct. Now, when you're trying to deposit the money in the account, they will, the bank teller will ask you from West Fargo, "Do you know this person?" You will say yes. Okay, okay? I'll, I'll say that I do. Yes, will do the deposit. Who? I'll say yes. But who is Jose Villarreal? Is he another agent? It's the attorney. Who, that's correct. He's handling your case from the IRS. Okay. He's the attorney. He's the one who's going to get. That is correct. The attorney was out of your case. Um, you can it, keep it simple. If they ask you any questions, you can just tell the bank teller if they ask you. If they ask you, okay? You can tell that he's the person who works for me. I can pay the commission back to him, okay? Keep it simple. That they do not update this information on your record. Okay. So how much time is going to take to go to your bank, go to the best bank, and come back home? Um, well, let me verify this one more time. We have the account number is 22... Six eight six three seven zero eight five. Um, the amount's going to be five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. The um, individual who is the holder of that account is Jose Villarreal, and he's an attorney with the IRS. Okay. That's correct. So you're going to have to tell that he's the attorney to the bank. Okay. But don't tell the don't 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 tell the bank that he's an attorney. Don't tell them that the money is for the IRS. If they ask, just tell them that uh, that he's a friend of mine and I'm uh, returning some money to him. And then when I go to my bank, when I go to my bank, just say that I'm withdrawing the money for personal reasons. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So how much time is it going to take to go to the bank and come back home? Oh, it could take. Once you do the deposit, you get the receipt. From the bank, you need to take the receipt and come back home. So how much time will it take? Um, well, it will take me a little bit longer because I have to walk over to this Wells Fargo location, which is um, uh, I don't know, like maybe about a mile away. So I walk. So it's going to be about a two or three mile walk. Um, so that could take that could take me like up maybe an hour. So I could have it done maybe by 11:50, 11:56. 
Okay. Maybe maybe around noon noon What's time. I'll, I'll have it done by noon time. So are you going to hold on the line until noon time? Or as what I will do is that I will call you back after an hour of time. Okay. You're going to call me back after an hour. Well, how about if I call you? Is it? Do you what's your extension? I know you gave me the the 800 number for the IRS. I have that 800 827. Number which will take approximately around we'll get the extension done approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, it's better have a remote time for you and then I have friendly called you. Okay, you'll, you have to, you'll call me back. Yeah, I will call your friendly from my end because I'm going to go in a meeting for a while. I have a different case that I'm handling at the same time. Okay, so I'm within an hour, I will be calling you back. So answer the call. Okay, okay, and, and you, what was your name again? Christopher, first name Christopher, last name Paul, P-A-U-L. Okay, Christopher Paul. All right, Christopher, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. But um, first, I just wanted okay. to, I just wanted to know, uh, 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 how many people do you actually get to give you money throughout the day? Waste what was that? I just wanted to know how how many. No, I'm not trying to waste your time. I don't want to go to jail. I really don't want to go to jail. I just was wondering how many people actually... I know that you're not going to make this payment, okay? Don't try to play around. No, I do. I want to make the payment. I don't want to go to jail. I just was... I will call you within an hour. I want you to be professional, and I will call you back, okay? No, no. No, I I want to make this payment. I just was curious, like, how many people do you do you contact throughout the day and, 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 and do this to? Okay, first thing I'm not authorized to answer to any of your questions. So what it's been asked you to do, just go ahead and get it down, okay? Okay, you want me to, you know, are you sure you don't want more than 53.50? I mean, that's kind of a low amount when I'm as rich as I am. Okay, keep your money for yourself, okay? Don't try to waste my time, thank you. No, 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 I'm not trying, I don't want to get arrested. You're going to arrest me, right? And she hung up. The call is over, <laughs> but I got Jose Jose Villarreal's phone number and uh, an account number at uh, Wells Fargo. All very interesting. Um, Jennifer, I actually don't have an account with you, um, but I do have a fraud to report. No, no, it's, uh, I actually got a call from somebody claiming to be from the IRS, and I followed it through all the way to the end, and they wanted me to deposit money into an account of yours, and um, I got the account number and the name of the person on the account, so it was like an IRS scam sort of thing, and they're using an account at your bank, so I just wanted to make you guys aware of what the account number was and what the name was so that you could okay. look into it further. Absolutely. Can I have that account number for me, please? Sure. It's um, 2268-637085. What's the name that was on there? Um, Jose Villarreal. Do you need to... Okay. Let me just... That can be very concerning when you're speaking on message. I do appreciate you calling in with it. Do you mind just a while I look into this for you? Sure. Thank you. I'll be right back. Thank you so much for helping. I do appreciate it. So what I'm going to do is get you over to our um, fraud operations department. Do you mind just a while I get them on the line? Yeah, no problem. Okay. I do want to thank you so much for calling into Wells Fargo with the information. Have a great day now. Thank you. Hello? Hey, Annetta, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I just need to invite you to this call and be recorded. How are you, sir? I'm I'm pretty good. So I just got All off right. I just got off the phone with somebody who was trying to get money out of me and um 
I played I played it out right to the end and in the end he gave me an account number to deposit the money into um, that that's a Wells Fargo account number and also the okay. name also the name of the person associated with the account all right and he said he was calling from IRS yep he said he was calling from the IRS and did he give you an amount he did he wanted me to pay five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars or I would be arrested in the next 30 minutes Wow yeah it was it was quite an interesting uh, scam from beginning to end and it was done really professionally but I knew it was a scam the second that I heard his voice on the phone because um, this guy is on some other people have recorded um, conversations with him and posted it to YouTube and I happened to have watched them so I so right from the beginning I knew it was a scam but do you have a phone number that they call from? Yep, it's uh, 773 634 7544. Thank you. And I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name's Joshua Gray. J O S H U A. Um, last name is G R A Y. And my cell phone is 207 751 2927. Did the caller give their name to you? They did, but it was fake. The caller claimed to be Christopher Paul with the IRS. Christopher Paul with the IRS, but um, it sounded like I was talking to a female, not a male, so I don't know how they could pull that off. Yeah, they can. All right. Right, and what is the account number that you were given? The account number is two two six eight six three seven zero eight five. All right, and is there any other information you want to provide, sir? Um, they said that the name of the account holder was Jose Villarreal. Do okay. you do you already have that, or do? You... Yes, she gave me the name. Okay. And they spelled Villarreal V I L L A R R E A L. Okay. And um, they claimed that this person was an attorney with the IRS. And you had to pay the attorney. That's right. Bank account. Okay. They wanted me to go to my bank, take out the money in cash, walk it to Wells Fargo, and then deposit it into this account. Um, and uh, they gave me all sorts of instructions, like if I was asked any questions, to, to say that I knew Jose and I was just repaying a loan or something. It was uh, quite an interesting scam, but just thought you guys should know about it. Oh, thank you so much. You know, we really appreciate it. We're going to get on this right away. Okay, perfect. Okay, anything else, sir? Um, nope, that was all. Thank you. If you need to ask me any other all questions, right. or I recorded the entire call. If you need a copy of that conversation, I can always uh, email it to you. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to um, give all this information um, to the correct people, and if they need anything else for you, from you, they'll go ahead and give you a call. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. You too. Bye. All right, now I'm going to try calling the, the IRS fraud number. Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration Integrity Hotline in Washington, D.C. Ha llamado en la oficina del Inspector General de Tesoro Federal para la administración de impuestos citas en Washington, D.C. 
For English, press 1 or stay on the line. This hotline receives allegations of misconduct or improprieties involving the Internal Revenue Service and its employees. This hotline cannot assist with tax-related questions. If you are calling to report what appears to be an IRS impersonation scam, you can visit the TIGTA website at www.tigta.gov to submit your information or please press 8. If you are calling to check the status of your IRS... Due to the high call volume we are receiving regarding the IRS impersonation scam, our voicemail box may be full. If you did not suffer an actual financial or personal identifiable information loss and you would still like to report information regarding the impersonation scam, you may go to our website at www.tig. That's what I thought would happen. You click on the red IRS impersonation scam reporting block in the upper right, or you may fax your information to 202. 927-7018, or you may send your information via U.S. mail to TIGTA at P.O. Box 589, Ben Franklin Station, Washington, D.C. 20044-0589. Please be assured that the IRS and the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration are aware of the ongoing impersonation scam and are seeking resolution. Your patience is appreciated. For scam information, please visit www.tinta.gov. If you suffered a financial loss or disclosed personally identifiable information, known as PII, as a result of the IRS impersonation scam, press 1. If you would like to report other information regarding the IRS impersonation scam, press 2. To repeat this information, press 9. Your call is being answered by Audix, Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. He is not available. To leave a message, wait for the tone. When finished recording, press pound for more options. Record at the tone. Hello, my name is Josh Gray. I was just called on the IRS scam, and I talked to the guy for about an hour. And at the end of the conversation, he gave me an account number and a name uh where to deposit the money they were trying to get from me the account number they gave me was a wells fargo account number two two six eight six three seven zero eight five again that's two two six eight six three seven zero eight five and the guy's name they wanted me to deposit the money um into his account was jose villareal his name is jose um j o s e villareal is v i L L A R R E A L. Um, I just wanted to get this information to you. I did file a complaint with Wells Fargo as well. I mean, a uh, uh, not a complaint. I, I made them aware of it as well. Um, but I wanted to make you guys aware. There's no need to call me back if you want to. My name's Joshua Gray. Um, my cell phone number is 207 751 2927. Uh, you can feel free to call me back, ask me any questions, but I just wanted to make you guys aware of this. Um, thank you, and uh, good luck. There you go. I reported it to Wells Fargo and to the IRS. I think I've done my civic duty. I think I'll post it on YouTube as well to make everybody else aware of what's going on.